Neja is rotating over. We are in a great spot. We've got great health and mana to push this. So we didn't have our dash there. But we did have the increased movement speed. So his dash is down. That's what we were able to provide support wise. Hopefully we can get this pick right here. We get the knock up. And we get the first blood. So that is huge. That's going to be an additional 500 gold in our pocket. Which should really help for getting Devourer's Gauntlets online. Here comes Discordia. Now we're looking a little low on mana, so we're not really looking to fight anything here. Discordia is still hanging out. We're not afraid of just Kumba. Easy peasy. Two kills onto the carry. Five minutes in. Feels pretty good. What a do, Scooby Doo, it's your boy Shawnee B Gaming, and today we have a viewer request of Jing Wei as Carrie. If you are new to the channel, I upload six to seven times a week. I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intention of seeing what went right and what went wrong. So hopefully, there's something that we can learn together. If you are a returning viewer, we have an interesting two games here today. One went really well, and the other one we've loaded into a little bit late. So let's go ahead and jump into Jinwei's kit. Jinwei's one is going to summon a small little circle that deals damage and knocks up enemies. The damage is going to persist, so anything that stands in it is going to take tick damage. If Jinwei walks over her one, she's going to be knocked up, but it's also going to increase her attack speed by uh, for six seconds. As you level up the one, the attack speed goes up. Jinwei's 2 is going to transform her next three shots into <laughs> special shots. These shots are going to deal damage to multiple enemies, and they also have a chance to crit. So if you shoot it at a group of three minions, it's going to do damage to all three minions. And then Jinwei's 3 is a dash. If she dashes, she's going to get increased movement speed and increased power. But if she dashes while she's in the air after being knocked up, those bonuses are going to increase, so the movement speed while dashing on the ground is 15%, and the maximum power is 30. That is when you have 5 points instead of the 3. And then whenever you jump from in the air, the attack speed is going to be, or the movement speed is going to be 25, and the power is going to be 40. So Jinwei's ultimate, she's going to become CC immune deal a bunch of damage in front of her and then she's going to hang out in the sky and she can kind of choose where she wants to land and then Jinwei's passive is she can fly out of spawn over walls is CC immune while flying and can cancel early at any time by pushing B on Xbox so right now we are going against a Chernos and a Kumbakarna We're just gonna stay, keep getting some pressure where we can. Enemies in the left jungle. Yes. Careful left. Answer for your sins. So this Kumba's pretty weak. I think we can do some damage. We're just gonna clean up the minion wave. See what Babiaga wants to do. I'm gonna move over to the small harpies. Getting these harpies are going to give us a small lead. Hopefully, we can hit level five before the enemies. Fix your that way. So we're walking into our 1, so that way we get the increased attack speed. At level 1, the increased attack speed is not much, but it's still better than nothing, so we're going to use it while we can. Right here, we're trying to target the 3 minions that are grouped in the back. We're going to use our 1 to get the knock up and dash away. Now we have increased attack speed and a little bit of bonus power and movement speed. So while we have all those little bonuses, we're gonna get some good damage onto Chernobo or Chernos. Here comes the Kumba root. We're gonna throw our one down, get a knock up. We're gonna get a couple shots off, and then we're gonna try to walk through it. But it dies right before we try to walk through it. So now we're gonna go back for our purple. Okay. So with Jin Wei. You want to start off by putting a point into your 1, and then you kind of have the option if you want to level up your 2 or your 3. 
If you feel like you might need the escape because they have super high pressure, I would level the 3. But in this game, I felt pretty comfortable leveling the 2, so I went ahead and leveled that. <clears throat> After we have a point into each ability, we're going to want it to max out our 1 first. Be right back. The 1 is just the best way to damage minions, and also it gives you the increased Anytime, attack speed. So we're going to hang out for just one more wave, Baba Yaga backed. We're going to clean up this wave, and then we're going to back ourselves. Enemy missing left. So in that scenario, right there, as I killed the minion wave, I threw my one on the minion wave, and in order for me to walk up to it and get knocked up by my own one, it would really put me out of position. So whenever you place your one, you want to be mindful if you want to try to use it to get the increased attack speed. If you're using it just to damage the minions, you can just throw it and not be too worried about it. But if you want to kind of save okay. it in case you're getting ganked, you would want to throw the one like right below yourself and dash away. Hopefully the one hits them and they get knocked up and it will buy you a little bit of wiggle room. So we're going to stick onto the Chernos. They have the wave pressure, so we're going to have to focus on the minions. Neja is rotating over. We are in a great spot. We've got great health and mana to push this. So we didn't have our dash there. But we did have the increased movement speed. So his dash is down. That's what we were able to provide support wise. Hopefully we can get this pick right here. We get the knock up. And we get the first blood. So that is huge. That's going to be an additional 500 gold in our pocket. Which should really help for getting Devourer's Gauntlets online. Here comes Discordia. Now we're looking a little low on mana, so we're not really looking to fight anything here. Discordia is still hanging out. We're not afraid of just Kumba. Easy peasy. Two kills onto the carry. Five minutes in. Feels pretty good. On my way. So we're going to move over to our purple, pick Wait. that up. The purple is going to remove enemy protections if they are near you, and it's also going to give you a small attack speed buff. I believe it's something like 15%. So nothing huge. So right here I think I'm backing, so I'm in the shop. Then I realize I'm not backing, so I actually back, go back to the shop. And we're going to pick up Devourer's Gauntlets. Devourer's Gauntlets are is a stackable lifesteal item that provides you power and percent lifesteal as you stack it up. Not exactly sure what happened leaving the fountain there. Be right back. Anyway, Devourer's Gauntlets, whenever it's fully stacked, is going to be one of the best lifesteal items in the game, if not the best. Enemy missing left is unfortunate. So they still have two over here. We're just going to play super carefully. Baba Yaga's going up mid. Oh, she might be coming left. At this point in the game, I feel like we are fine. We could handle this lane by ourselves, even if it is two people. We're just going to hang out in the back. So Baba Yaga is about to make a gank. We're going to throw our one, get a little bit of poke onto the Chernos miss a lot of things so we're gonna dash away while Baba Yaga chases down Turnbog I'm just gonna focus on the wave I am building stacks so I want to try to get as many final hits onto the minions Enemy as possible down. Baba Yaga was able to push them out I was pretty weak so I didn't feel comfortable pushing with them An enemy has been slain. or with Baba Yaga not them Get the increased attack speed. Enemy misses. Use the two to clear the archers. Now we're gonna go ahead and back. We have enough for the tier two boots. We saw Baba Yaga kind of commit, so we stay around. We're gonna tag up this next wave just because we didn't back immediately. Ultimate is down. So they're both here. I need to be a little bit careful. Kumba could. CC me and then turn to do some serious damage. So that's Churn's dash. We're gonna use our one, knocks him up, puts him in, in a worse position than he was in. Kumba unfortunately uses his three to cancel me out of my dash. I'm gonna use my beats to avoid the root, and it looks like I am able to get out. 
We're going to pick up the tier 2 boots and we're going to eventually want to buy the ninja tab eye or the red attack speed boots. I feel like these three items are core on most hunters with the exception of a few who do pretty well with transcendence instead of devourer's gauntlet. So once you have the hunter's blessing, devourer's gauntlet, the ninja tab eye online, that fourth item is a very interesting pick. There's a lot of things you could go for that item, so we'll kind of go over that whenever we're not fighting as much. I use my ultimate to try to chase down this Pele. I immediately get ulted upon landing and then just gobbled by the enemy team. So that was a bit of a misplay. I saw the weak Pele and I tried to overcommit, use my ultimate to try to get to her. Unfortunately did not get to her and by the time I landed I had no escape. So right there, I should have just hung out, kind of, between our purple and gold fury, and just tried to get some basics off, and if they come over to my lane, fall back to tower. But right there, I don't think there was any benefit in being that aggressive this early. Yes. <clears throat> so they still have two over in the left lane, which means Churn is splitting farm with Kumba while I'm getting the full farm. So after buying the Ninja Tab Eye, there's a couple of options we could go. The Executioner is a great item, it's going to increase our attack speed and it's going to remove the physical protections of anybody we hit with our basics. Very, very useful item. Another item that is also viable is going into Rage right after boots. You're not going to have a crazy spike after boots. But you will after you get the item after rage, and hopefully you'll get rage fully stacked. You could go... I'm drawing a blank on the name of it. Whenever we buy it, we'll uh, take a look. It's on the same tree as the like silver branch bow. There is the... Oh, we're going to dash over turns ult. That was beautiful. And now we're going to basic attack him. Let devourers gauntlets do their thing. We're going to ult. And we are able to get the pick onto Churn with 12 health left to spare. Donatos could execute us, but we look at the minimap and we see he's all the way on the other side of the map. So we're just going to go ahead and back. And next we are going to be going into... It's on that tree. It's the blue one. I feel... I'm going to look it up real quick while I fly back to lane. Your teammate falls. So it doesn't look like anyone's over in lane. An enemy has been slain. We should be able to just farm this wave in the next one pretty easily. Another taken out. Okay, so you could go after going into the Devourer's Gauntlet's attack speed boots. You could go Executioner, which is a very viable item. You could go Rage, which is not as viable, but could pay off in the long run. And then there's also two items on this bow tree. We have Ikival, and we have Atlantis's bow. This game, we're going to go Atlantis's bow, just because I think we were short a couple hundred gold to get the Ikival. And we just wanted to leave base with a tier 3 weapon. So the Atlantis's bow is going to give you a stack of movement speed every time you land a basic attack that makes it very easy to gain the movement advantage on the enemy when boxing with them in a 1v1 in dual lane and then Icky Val is like the counter for your hunter so what Icky Val does is whenever you land a basic attack you're going to get increased power physical power and you're also going to reduce their attack speed so Buying Ikival into a Hunter, you're going to reduce their attack speed while also increasing your power. If they have Executioner and you have Ikival, you should win the fight. So, this game, the intention was to go Ikival, but we were a little short on gold, so we went the Atlantis' bow. I think any of those four items are great. Great items to start to finish out your Hunter builds. I feel like most builds are going to start with Devos or Trans, go into attack speed boots, and then you kind of have that flex option where there's a couple of options 
I've gone over four of them, and what I think some of the strengths and weaknesses of each are. We're getting ganked by Paley, so we're gonna dash away. I think we are safe. So we don't have any potions. There is the Paley ult, we're gonna use our one, we're gonna dash away. And I believe we are out. So by hanging around, we are able to bait out a Pele ult. Hopefully that helps somebody else out. So right here, we want to buy a key ball. We don't have enough money, so we're just going to go Atlantis bow. I'm such a terror. Like it was made for my hand. I think either are viable. I think the Atlantis bow <laughs> saves my life in a situation coming up. I think Icky Ball is probably a better item. Your right tower is so the trade-off between Icky Ball and Executioner. Executioner is going to be super effective against everybody on the enemy team. Icky Val is going to be super effective against their hunter. So if you're looking for an item for the team fight, Executioner is probably a safer bet. But if you're looking to bully your opponent in lane, I would go into Icky Ball. And if you just want to zoom around, we have Atalanta's bow. We take a lot of damage, we're going to dash away. The ults were luckily able to step out of it. I think we would not have been able to have the movement speed if we did not have Icky Vault right there. We are one shot away, so we're going to start peeling off. Throw our one down. So hopefully he has to go around it, buying us a little bit more time to run away. And it looks like we were able to back up successfully, so we're gonna go ahead and back. I saw that one coming. Not a problem. We're gonna buy Aegis as our secondary relic. We need boards. Okay. Looks like Cern's gonna back. We're just gonna clean up this wave. I'm on it. So now that we're fully stacked, we are going to want to start looking to make an impact in the jungle and in mid lane. We should be able to burn this tower relatively quickly. We're going to get the increased attack speed from the 1. Thonatos ults. Luckily, he lands on our 1 and gets knocked up, or else he might have been able to really burst us down right there. Dodges throw. Now we turn on him. We're going to ult away from the churn. We're trying to get some damage onto the Thonatos. We're going to move towards the Hell. Hell's going to heal us up quite a bit. We're going to move around just to get the safe positioning. Thonatos is here. We're able to get the pick on the churn. Pele ults in. We're going to use... We don't have our ones. So we're just going to dash away to get a heal from Hell. We eat the ultimate from Discordia, we're going to peel off into jungle, that way we don't hit our team. We're looking pretty low. We have Divine Ruin proc on us, so our heals aren't going to be as effective. But we're moving up as a team, we got two enemies down. Their Discordia is about to go down. We're going to dash forward, and there is the Surrender. Well, that is the first game. The stats are going to be posted in just a second. Be sure to stick around, because we have another game coming. So we went 5, 1, and 1. Let's check on that player damage. Player damage was only 10,265. So in this second game, if you take a look at the levels, I am a level 1. Air carry is a level 4, it's 3 minutes in, and I just loaded into the game. So we are playing this entire game from behind. Not by just 1 or 2 levels, but by 3. So, we are going to need to play super passive, super farmy, and we're going to want to try to avoid fights as much as possible. Yet, whenever we first show up to lane, the first thing we see is a fight. Cancel that. Be careful. There is like, don't even try. Yes. I'm like, yep. <laughs> Bye. Bye. 
So right now, I'm afraid to even push up towards Wave because they, I don't have my dash yet. They could just kill me. If Kepri were to pull me right there, I think I'd be dead. So with Terra here, we're going to move up just a little bit. Once we hit level 2, we should feel a lot more comfortable with our 3. That's a shell from Kepri. Once we see that he pops the relic, we're just going to disengage. A general rule of practice, if somebody uses the relic, that's a win. You don't need to chase them down and kill them. Just by getting them to use their relic, that alone is a win. So the next time we fight them, we know he won't have a shell and we can fully commit. But if we were to fully commit right there, I feel like we would have taken more damage than we originally predicted we were going to. So we just play it safe and disengage after we see the shell. We're going to hit the Harpy because we need all the XP we can possibly get. Out of mana. Later. Thanks. So I tell Terra to go ahead and back. And this Capri is holding wave which is super detrimental to the level 2 Jingwei. I can't even trade basics with Kepri right now. I'm doing 46 damage and he's doing 41 to me. He has a lot more health than me. I would lose that trade every day as a level 2 Ching Wei. We're on the same level, different story. Enemy missing right. So it looks like their Kepri might have rotated out, although they're probably just hitting our purple. We're going to walk into the 1, dash out, back under tower so we get the increased power and the increased attack speed. It's not a whole lot right now, but it's worth something. So we finally hit level 3, we have a point in all of our abilities, we are still down 3 levels. And for this video, I hope it's informative and that we can look at it from the lens of oh Jinwei is behind how do you play from behind so we're just gonna sit under tower sit kind of defensively and try to farm up as much as possible so right there we got the pick onto the one I saw Kepper was weak I got pretty aggressive used all my abilities to move up the lane and then Raijin or no, not Raijin, Robin was able to just rotate over right after I used my dash, leaving me in a terrible position. So that death was preventable. I could have left Kepri for my team to clean up, but instead I got pretty aggressive, dashed forward, and then their jungler just happened to be there and cleaned me up. Good luck. Thanks. So, oh one and two. But loading into the game late that's honestly not terrible the fact that they haven't punished me more is a promising sign is ready. i think this izanami made a questionable mistake okay. in her build she bought a Odysseus's bow right. okay. Odysseus's bow is a decent item but it doesn't really provide you any Enemy power right. so in the early game you do get the increased attack speed and the damage does chain occasionally, but I feel like power is just a much more viable option. So unfortunately we got caught by Capri, we're just going to ult out. We are playing as safe as possible. Capri's going to rotate away and there's not a whole lot we can do. Izanami's going to be able to full clear this wave. So now Izanami's missing. They are either hitting our purple or maybe checking oracles. This one's mine. Your middle tower is under attack. We're going to use the one. They come back from jungle. That's the Kepri dash. We're going to put some shots onto him. So now we have enough money for Devo or Devourer's Gauntlets. We're going to see if we can help this Bakasaur at all. Looks like Kepri is just going to be able to get out. So we're just going to focus on the wave. Keeping in mind that we are still under leveled. And that we 
do not bring as much to team fight as almost anybody else on the map. So we're just going to go ahead and back. Oh, we're going to check our purple and then back. That was super annoying Capri. We dodged the Capri dash, the Capri 2. So here comes Bakasaur. Bakasaura. That is the Izanami dash. And Izanami gets brought over to Capri. We're going to use our ultimate. We were just short of the Izanami, so we're going to dash back to the defensive position. Izanami's still hanging about, so we're going to throw our one. And we're able to get her with a basic attack. Robin is still over here, but we're just going to focus on the wave. We don't have great damage quite yet. So we're going to back and start stacking the Devourer's Gauntlets. Right there I hear Robin punch and I see the animation from Terra and it just scared me. So I jumped and nuked real quick. So we got Devo's Gauntlets. We got a health potion and a mana potion just so we can get some stacks on before we have to back. And we got the tier 1 boots. With Jinwei, you typically don't need too many potions because you're able to just fly back to the lane faster than any other character. But I did pick some up just so I could stay around a little bit longer if I really wanted to. Now that we've started stacking Devourer's Gauntlets, we're going to be stacking for a while and we're going to want to be staying in lane, not missing any minions until we are fully stacked. So we finally caught up in level to Izanami, she just hit level 9, so she just got a little bit farther ahead. Enemies in the right jungle. Be careful, right. We're going to clean up this wave. Your middle tower is under attack. Enemy missing right. So I let the team know that there's nobody over here. the one on the wave so right there that's a little too far for us to go and try to get knocked up by so we're just gonna move back enemy missing left enemy missing right so Robin is in left jungle so we don't need to worry about being ganked we could probably try to push her if we really wanted to but I think she just has better pressure than I do I'm already half health and I still have a full minion wave to deal with Take this jungle buff. Akasora made a rotation if he hangs around we might be able to help him try to get a pick up onto the Izanami but it looks like he's just gonna rotate out I let the team know that nobody's over here. Looks like she was hitting her purple. She has high pressure, so we're just going to keep falling back. We're going to have to hold out. And we're just going to have to back. She's probably going to get the tower for that. We got our attack speed boots online. Been destroyed. So we are slowly catching up. So Izanami has Odysseus's bow instead of Devourer's Gauntlets, which means she does not have the same level of lifesteal that I do. So if we were to trade shot for shot, hit everything, we should be able to win the fight. So I make the call to go for gold, Care they now. have vision on it so we're just going to back up, winter. plus our team wasn't rotating. So Kepri is over in dual lane, we're going to clean this up, clean up the wave at least. Souls rotating towards our red, it would be a good time to fall back and go help our team. On my way. Your middle tower is under kind of a bad situation, this isn't exactly where we want to be fighting. No problem. We get the one onto the Sun Wukong. Not the Sun Wukong, the Rivana. It looks like Sun Wukong for some reason. We're going to dash out. The Terror Heal and the Terror Ultimate are going to be very helpful. We're feeling a little bit safe, so we're going to look to re-engage. is able to get a pick. Three people over here. 
we're going to dash, get the increased attack speed. Get some damage off on Izanami, but she trades with us. We lose more than she does. We are able to dodge the Soul 2. Blackasaur is still going, and we're going to go ahead and back, and then fly back to lane. Hopefully the action is still going on. I'll Good luck. Good luck, double kill. Answer for your sin. So, looks like our lane is open. We're just going to go back to farming. Still trying to get the full stacks on the Evos. Our purple is down. It might time out before we can get to it. So, for this game, we are going to be going into the Executioner after Ninja Tabai. Executioner is going to give us some power, some attack speed, and it's going to remove 12% of their physical protection. Stacks up to three times for a total of 36% physical protection removal upon landing three basic attacks. So we got a little poke onto Izanami there. We weren't going to be able to have a favorable fight in jungle, so we're just going to go back to the lane. Two people over here. As long as there's two people over here, I am getting more XP than Izanami is. Looks like Kepri's leaving. And it looks like she just backed. With Kepri leaving, we do not have vision on Robin, but I think we're going to be able to push this tower. So, that is some gold for our team. Whenever a tower goes down, everybody on the team gets some gold. So it's nice to get that down and get some gold for everybody. We are going to link up with Terra and go for this camp. And we have passed Izanami in level. Took a little over 10 minutes, but we finally did it. We still are not full stack on our Devos. Here's King Arthur. We don't have great damage onto him, but we can still try to get some damage onto him right now. If we had the Executioner, we'd be doing a lot more damage. So there is the Terra Ultimate, which is going to heal me as I get hit by King Arthur. Pocasaur is here, so I'm just going to ult out. And we are able to get the pick so i'm just going to take this buff and then maybe clean up red lane still trying to stack my devos and i should be able to life steal off of anything i farm So we have Terra already on gold, Cronus is at red, kind of makes sense to go for gold. They do have vision on it, but I think we're going to be able to burn it down. And Izanami steals the gold, which is super unfortunate. But we get an assist onto Izanami. We're going to go ahead and back because Cancel. our mana levels are looking low. We're going to pick up the Executioner. Right somehow. So if you do go into the Executioner, the items that you could build afterwards, if you were to go to that full tree and go Quinsai and Aussie, Aussie with Devos is a little bit redundant. You're going to have crazy lifesteal, but I don't know. I feel like they're better items. So you could go Executioner, you could go Quinsai, you could go Odysseus' Blow, and then you can maybe go into Wind Demon, or you can go into a more crit heavy. You could go Executioner, Rage, Wind Demon, Deathbringer. Mustn't be surprised. After Executioner, you can buy Rage and then pretty much flex into any crit build. After Executioner, you can pretty much buy 
any combo of hunter items and you should relatively be set. So we got our pressure in our lane, we're going to rotate mid, see if there's anything we can do. Kepri's here, don't want to get caught by him, so we're just going to rotate back. Cronus is dropping red, I'm going to go drop purple. Izanami is not in lane. Looks like there's a bit of a team fight breaking out in mid. We're gonna clean up our lane, and then we might rotate over, or we might push this next wave. Enemy missing right. I let the team know that Izanami's not here. An enemy so we're definitely gonna want to rotate over. There is a fight going on in left jungle. Robin's also about to join it. Izanami is by herself on right. Okay. Retreat middle lane. We're gonna link up with the team. We're not interested in trying to solo Izanami. Get the increased attack speed from the one. I'm getting knocked up by the one. Should be a little bit more specific. Your team has destroyed a middle enemy tower. Our teams are moving into left jungle. Looks like we should just be able to fall back. Okay. I think we could do fire. Robin is close by. Maybe not do fire. We're gonna bait fire. We're gonna hang out by fire. Try to get them to come on by. We're going to move towards center. We see that Izanami is pushing our tower, or she might be in just a moment. So we're going to move over to Pyromancer to get the easy objective. And then we might back to deal with her. We're going to kind of wait to see if we see her again. Kepri is rotating over. We could kill Kepri and then go for Fire Giant right here. In fact, we probably could have gone for Fire Giant before going for Pyromancer. Izanami is on the tower. She's probably going to get it. We are able to get the pick onto the Kepri. We either need to go for fire or somebody's got a back for easy. Right Izzy. Izanami? Izanami? Sorry, sometimes my mind just wanders. We're gonna work on Fire Giant. King Arthur is here. He does not have the best secure. So we're gonna stick onto him. Robin comes and attacks us from behind. We're going to dash away. We're turning. It doesn't look like anyone's around. King Arthur's going to stick onto us. We're going to just stay in Terra's heels. And that is going to be the surrender. Well, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you feel like you learned anything at all, please check out some other videos and maybe even subscribe. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a good day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.